Welcome to the introduction to uh, the Shamu High Performance Computing Cluster that we'll be using as an educational tool in the uh, introduction to high performance computing class taught at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Shamu is a uh, Sun Linux cluster that we have here on campus. Uh, it consists of 24 nodes. Uh, you can think of a node as a, as a rack blade in a computer. Uh, each node has eight processors, so there's a total of 192. Uh, we have one login node, that's the node that uh, when you log into Shamu, you'll be uh, all in uh, two vis visualization nodes that uh, have gra graphic po processing units uh, connected to them that we can use for uh, GPU computing and uh, visualization purposes. All of the rest of the nodes are dedicated uh, just strictly to uh, computing, number crunching. Uh, the computer's connected, uh, well, the, each node is connected to each other and then to a file server system. Uh, through an InfiniBand, which is a uh, fabric communication system capable uh, of hundreds of gigabyte per second throughput depending on exactly uh, the method of, of uh, communication. So this is much faster uh, than, than Ethernet or anything like that. The DNS name that we'll use to access Shamu is uh, shamu.coe.utsa.edu. Um, there's actually a web page here as well if you uh, f preface this with uh, http colon slash slash shamu dot coe dot utsa dot edu you can access the web page which gives you some access or gives you some information as to um, all the, the usage loads and other things uh, on the computer Uh, the software that Shamu runs is uh, uh, a little bit older version of CentOS. Uh, it it uh, has to do with the firmware. Uh, the reason it hasn't been upgraded to the most recent version or uh, more modern version of, say, Red Hat or Fedora uh, has to do with firmware that's uh, on the old Sun uh, chipset. And uh, anyway, it's a very stable operating system. And as we learned in the introduction to Unix, there are many flavors of uh, Linux, uh, so in this one, we're just using a CentOS. <clears throat> so how do we get on Shamu? Uh, Shamu can be accessed by any user with an account on it. Uh, that includes all the users in the Introduction to High Performance Computing class, or all the students in the Introduction to High Performance Computing class will have a user account, and you can access it through an SSH client. Uh, we'll talk about, in class, um, how to access it from the computers on campus and uh, also have a, a short tutorial up about the recommended method that I uh, have for uh, accessing it from home if you if you choose to do so and that's through a virtual box uh, client that runs uh, some version of Linux uh, and I have an instruction of how to set that up in that tutorial so once you have an SSH client you can open a terminal window uh, or you can open a terminal window to, to access Shamu uh, and we'll do that with this com command. So it'll be SSH-P 1209 is the locate the port number of the login or head node. Dash Y will uh, forward the next window and we'll talk about what that is uh, later on. But <clears throat> then you'll use your ABC123 username at shamu.coe.utsa.edu. Uh, so, as I said, the, the dash P signifies the port number. Uh, port 21210 is a visualization node. If you want to do some visualization work, you can log in there. And uh, the dash Y forwards the X window. So let's, let's go ahead and give a demonstration. Uh, here I have a, a, a terminal window open uh, here on my local computer. Uh, as you see, my local computer is L Lagrange. Uh, the name of the computer is Lagrange. So if we SSH-P1209-YFES788 is my ABC123 username at shamu.coe.utsa.edu and then we go ahead and put in your regular password there and now if we uh, I'll go ahead and clear the, t the window there but if we type hostname uh, we can see we are logged into Shamu at this time. So that's how you'd go about that. 
software that's installed. Well, it, it is a, a full-fledged Linux distribution, so there's a ton of software installed with the Linux distribution. Too much to list here. If you'd like to take a look at it, you can do that in uh, just by looking at the user bin. So uh, if, if you type in the window ls space usr bin, uh, there gives a full long list of software that's installed. So what we see on the screen here is only the end or the tail end of uh, many, many, you know, hundreds uh, of programs that are pre-installed. Uh, however, most of the scientific software uh, is installed in module modules. So we can we can see what those are by uh, typing in the window module avail. Uh, these include compilers, uh, access to codes like MATLAB or Abacus, uh, Python, which we'll use a lot in the class. Uh, so you can see the full list by typing module avail, and then if you'd like to uh, look at, uh, you know, actually load one, you would load it with module load, and this would make it uh, available uh, to, to you. So as an example, if we would like to run Python, um, if we just type Python, in uh, in the uh, in the in the prompt there, you'll see that th there's uh, some error there due to loading shared libraries or something. I'm not sure what that's about um, uh, at this point, but it doesn't matter. If we type module load python 273, uh, then we type python, then you see we have a python. Uh, terminal open and we can, you know, use it interactively to do whatever we'd like to do. Okay. So finally, just a couple of tips on being a friendly user on Shamu. We're going to talk more about file systems and directory structures in this uh, class later on, but on Shamu, uh, you know, use the home directory, the tilde is shortcut for home, use that uh, for storing what uh, small permanent files and directories and uh, probably any executables that you build on your own that you might want to run, uh, any customization uh, scripts or files you'll put in your home directory and small is obviously relative but what I mean here uh, is, you know, this is not a place to store, you know, output from simulations or other, you know, terabytes of data uh, that you're only going to delete later. Uh, there's a separate directory called scratch for that. So from the root, uh, if, you, if you type scratch, then uh, this is a place where you'd want to run and output simulations uh, uh, such that, uh, you know, this is where you'd want to store any large temporary files that you may be deleting later. Uh, scratch has a, a purge system such that uh, if the files sit there too long unused, uh, they will be removed. So be wary of that. <clears throat> uh, it's also Scratch is much, much faster because it's connected to the nodes through InfiniBan, whereas the login node is, is not uh, is for writing purposes. So you're going to get a lot faster simulation uh, uh, output if you use a Scratch. And the login node should only be used for really for compiling and, and other kind of really short uh, interactive work. Um, if you're going to run, you know, Python code or MATLAB code or any kind of other interactive work, uh, it's really to be more user friendly to use QLogin. So what QLogin will do uh, will give you access to one of the compute nodes uh, on your own if it's available, of course, and uh, you'll, you'll then uh, be able to run your jobs there as if it were on your your own computer. Whereas the head node may have 10 or 15 other users logged in. So uh, from the head node, you should, in general, just use it for compiling and submitting non-interactive jobs, which we'll talk much more about later. Uh, so it's not something to worry about now. But just to give you an idea of what, how you might do that, uh, if you just type, uh, well, if we type uh, host name, uh, then we type uh, qlogin, uh, you can see it, it uh, submits basically an interactive uh, queue for us. And I believe now if we type host name, uh, it, you can see that we're on a different uh, compute node within Shamu, uh, actually the the eleventh one there. So then, you know, if I wanted to run Python, I could do it from him from here. Um, uh, actually, you, you see that uh, the the version of Python that I have loaded here is 2.4.3. Uh, so someone some issue with the library must only have to do with my my head node. Uh, so if we actually get out of Python, 
type module load Python 2.7.3 and then we type Python again now we see we have the most up-to-date version of Python uh, there so that concludes this tutorial thanks